Hello everyone, my name is Ramla, President and Co-Founder of Mass Analytics. Welcome to Marketing Mix Modeling Masterclasses Season 4. In this season, we are not going to focus on a specific topic. We'll cover multiple subjects based on the latest conversations that I had with my clients. Marketing Mix Modeling for different industries. Marketing Mix Modeling is fit for different verticals and industries. However, there are nuances that one needs to be aware of before starting modeling. Understanding the context of the model and the vertical is key for your results interpretability. For example, modeling Netflix is not the same as modeling Carrefour, is not the same as modeling Gaviscon. Let's start by FMCG or CPG, consumer packaged goods or fast moving consumer goods. So in this vertical, we generally model volume sales. And the data generally comes from either Nielsen or IRI. Now, the business question that we generally ask in the context of CPG or FMCG brands is what is the driver of my sales? What is the return on investment of every single channel? How do we compare between the different promotional mechanics? Is the price elasticity different from one account to the other? And how can I optimize my budget across all the products that I have within a brand? And that's why sometimes when we are to model many SQs belonging to a specific brand, we end up pooling this data in order to obtain results at that level. Now, when it comes to the media channels that are deployed, generally FMCG and CPG are still heavily reliant on offline media. But we see that more and more, there is a bigger size of the budget that is moving towards digital channels and social channels. So taking into consideration this, it's very important that this enters into equation when it comes to modeling your results. The retail vertical. Retailers are very interesting to model. One of the KPIs that one can think of in the context of retailer is sales, either in terms of revenue or in terms of transaction. Now, the other metric that is also modeled in the context of a retailer is footfall. We also know that most of the retailers out there have also a sales channel online. And that's where it becomes really interesting to explore both the impact of your media and marketing activity on online sales and brick and mortar stores, because the behavior of your consumers will be different across these two channels. In terms of the mix, retailers generally deploy a mix of marketing channels like media, offline, online, digital, social, uh, catalogs, emails, leafleting, outdoor activities for the offline media, and television in most of the times. The business question they try to understand and to answer are around how much media is bringing footfall to me. And once these customers are within the store, how my promotional mechanics and my display activities and my in-store activities are influencing the customer. The other granularity that retailers are after is to look at the effect of media and marketing across categories. In a retailer, you have different categories and you can choose to advertise one category and all of them. And in this context, you'll be looking at understanding the impact of specific media on a specific category, but also whether there is a hero effect from one category to the other. Now, another level of granularity that you can look at in the context of retailer is a store by store modeling. Because most of the time, there are specific activities that are local to stores or local to the vicinity where the store is. And it's very important to capture that granularity. So running store-by-store -store modeling will allow us to do so. It will increase your degrees of freedom, it will improve the robustness of your results, and it will certainly make your client very happy. D2C clients. Marketing mix modeling is very important for D2C clients, especially that the number of the players in the D2C client vertical has increased a lot in recent years especially since COVID-19. Now, what is interesting within the D2C client vertical is that they are interested in two types of KPIs. How much media and marketing activities are bringing in terms of acquisition, meaning new clients, new subscriptions, for example, and how much my media and marketing activities are influencing my renewals. Therefore, the KPIs that we generally model in this context are renewals and acquisition. Now, in terms of media mix, they are generally heavily reliant on deploying paid digital advertising, social media, 
search, display, programmatic influencers are some examples of the media channels being used by these D2C clients. However, some of them use as well offline channels, like television, for example, in order to boost the number of their subscriptions. When it comes to the business questions that D2C clients generally try to address through marketing mix modeling, it's a mixture of what are the drivers of my renewals, what are the drivers of my acquisition, how does my promotional activity impact my sales, what is the impact of my seasonality, what is the impact of COVID in, my, in, in the growth of my brand or in the decline of my brand, and how all these factors contribute together to create value for the DTC client. Now, of particular interest is to understand what are the specific media channels that they can deploy to encourage and boost renewals, and what are the mix of media channels that they need to use in order to boost acquisition. Because, of course, the more clients you acquire, the higher is your database and the higher likelihood you have to have higher renewals. Now, what is also very interesting and very good in the context of D2C is that they own their data. That's the same case as retailers. Retailers have their own data. They don't have to fetch it from other third-party sources, which is the case of CPG brands. D2C, they know exactly how many subscriptions they have sold, how many renewals they have had. That's why the marketing mix modeling is really booming in the context of D2C clients. So it's a great opportunity for you there if you want to deploy marketing mix modeling. Financial services vertical. What you mean by financial services? Things like banks, insurance, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, the KPI that we generally model in the context of a bank is the number of new accounts opening, for example. Also, a bank sells different products, and it's very important to understand how media and marketing activity is impacting each product. Another granularity that is added in the modeling of the banking sector, for example, is looking at the customer segment. Okay, for example, young customers versus mature customers, because we know that the drivers of each customer segment is different. Now, when you look at the media mix, it's almost a mixture of offline and online advertising. More and more, the share of budget of financial institutions goes towards digital channels in order to attract younger customer segments. And it works. Ambassadors, influencers, etc., etc., are key drivers in this context. The business questions that generally the, uh, the financial sector tries to understand is what is the impact of my media and marketing activities on the new accounts being opened? Uh, what is the halo effect of my brand activity as opposed to advertising specific products? What is the ROI and the cost per acquisition for every single channel that I have deployed? And whether there is any synergy effect between offline and online media channels. Most importantly, disentangling the media channels that have an impact on a specific customer segment and the other ones that have an impact on other customer segment like the mature customer segment. So also what is interesting in the context of financial sector, like retailers and D2C, is that the data is owned by the company. So when you want to deploy marketing mix modeling for a bank, the data is already there. You don't have to look at it or fetch it from a third party data, like for example, CPG and FMCG. And that's what makes marketing mix modeling easier to deploy for banks, insurance, which is the financial sector, or retailers and D2C, as I explained earlier on. Marketing mix modeling is a great exercise for many verticals. However, if you are a marketing analyst delivering a marketing mix modeling project, it's very important that you acknowledge the specificity of every single vertical. Think about defining the KPI that you want to model. Is it sales? Is it transactions? Is it number of new subscriptions? Is it renewals? Think about the data sources that you need to look at in order to collect the information that is key for your modeling. Is it owned by the client? Is it something that you need to get from a third party? And think about what mechanics you need to put in place in order to make sure that the data is accurate for your modeling exercise. Now, zooming on to the mix of the channels that is being used by your client, think about looking at different channels offline and online, paid media, owned media, earned media, look at the level of the execution of every single channel and every single platform so you can get the granular results that your client is after. Also, very important that you think and you consider 
upfront the business questions that your client is after. Why am I running this marketing mix model project? What are the questions that I want to answer in this context? Is it just reporting on the sales drivers? Or is it also about reporting on the return on investment of every single channel by campaign, by execution, the cost per acquisition for every single platform, and the synergy effect between the different channels, and perhaps the impact of prices, competition, distribution, etc., etc. Think about all this before embarking in your MMM journey because that will make your results unique, sound when it comes to presenting them to your clients. Another important component that you need to think of is that ROIs and CPAs differ by vertical. So when you present your ROI analysis for your client, make sure that you benchmark it against the industry because the ROI of television or paid search in the context of a retailer is different from the banking sector, is different from D2C, and is different from CPG. So what your client is expecting is to put his or their number into context and benchmark it to the other numbers that you have within that vertical so they know whether they are doing better than the market or performing less than the market. And this is a very important information to convey to your clients.